Hey guys, Death Letter Magic here, and there were only three spoilers remaining from, I guess, Friday night. But I figured, what the heck, I didn't have any other video planned. So, first up, Aid the Fallen. It's a two-cost black sorcery, choose one or both, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and you can also return target Planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, we already have a version of this, and I think it costs three, and people still play it, so... Obviously, this is going to be a insane card. Unfortunately, it's on color with Esper, which means Teferi's coming right back, so I have to give this an F-. minus. That's right, we're doing grades now. This is a massive, massive design failure uh, based on the current standard meta that they couldn't have possibly predicted. But you know what? I'm sick of playing against Esper Control, where the win con is waiting for me to die of old age, so I don't care if R&D has to call a damn psychic. They shouldn't be printing crap that helps out Teferi this much. So separate from that, this is just a solid card. Really good card. I'm shocked that it's in the common slot. By the way, that flavor text pretty much sums up this entire storyline, I would assume. I never liked you. Now get up. We have a fight to finish. Now Soren and the, the lady from Farscape, like, they ain't getting along. Obnixlas, he ain't getting along with anybody. But uh, some of the other Planeswalkers just at a basic level don't like each other. I, I gotta say, I have no idea who's in that artwork. I think those are two made-up characters. Y próximo tenemos Troll Desafiante. Uh, apparently that translates to Challenging Troll. I actually wasn't familiar with that word myself. This isn't a troll. It's a troll. Just take my word for it. There's a pronunciation difference. And uh, it says, every creature that you control with strength of four or more cannot uh, be blocked. Oh, that makes sense. I was wondering where they were going with that odd phrasing. It cannot be blocked for more, or by more, oh my gosh, by more than one creature. Wow, that was so difficile. My God, it's like two in the morning and I'm treating this like it's Portuguese or something. I know how to read this, damn it. So the flavor text, before I completely forget to translate it, is uh, for the, I guess in context that has to be majority, um, uh, the war, the battle, whatever, is a calamity, basically. I'm sure there's a better word in English for that. I mean, what is this, 1930? Nobody says calamity. So for the majority, like, it's bad. Uh, for some, an opportunity. And for uh, the minority, I guess you would say, a pleasure. And that really is a, a deep meaningful and insightful statement that Wizards is making about prepping. Hey, if y'all been watching this channel long enough, you know I'm a prepper. To an extent that a sane person can be, let me just add that. I got training, I got, you know, tons of food, supplies, I got the emergency bag, you know, I'm not an idiot, plus I have a buttload of guns. Well, they always say, as soon as some weird crap goes down, like Hurricane Katrina or even just a tornado, which we get a tornado every damn three years in my city. Last time we had no power for three days, that was fun. But people didn't start looting and shooting each other in the streets, as far as I know. But when you get a large enough scale thing, yeah, people are going to get nuts. All the psychopaths, all the people who are sociopaths, who don't fit into society, or the drug addicts, or existing criminals and felons, mentally unstable people. Yeah, they're going to treat the calamity as an opportunity. So in other words, buy a gun. Hey, and if you didn't hear about it, uh, California allegedly just overturned, a judge overturned as unconstitutional their 10-round uh, magazine uh, ban, which was actively getting multiple people killed per year. Me and my 40-round magazine full of armor-piercing rounds sitting right next to me agree with that decision. So that went off on a weird tangent. But as for this card, I mean, it's a 6-5 five for 5. And uh, if you forgot, creatures you control with power four or greater can't be blocked by more than one creature. So it's basically a trample enabler. You run this with that four cost give everybody trample thing or the six cost mammoth that does the same. Oh my gosh. But it's one of those where do you need it? Like who cares if they block with six creatures or four creatures or three creatures? They can only do that a couple times. And if you have ambush boost or some kind of combat trick... It doesn't matter. The, the overflow is going to get to them eventually. The just green freight train run them over deck is probably going to be card draw heavy with Beast Whisper and that other card that was just spoiled. So um, I would think you don't really need this card, especially for five. And finally, we've got Sage de la Revolution. Just kidding. It's just evolution. It's not, it's not Viva la Revolution. I mean, come on, really? Druids? The famous pacifists? 
Anyway, I don't know what the hell this says. So um, I, I got a better chance of reading Italian, to be perfectly honest. So uh, it's Evolution Sage, in case you're stupid. And it says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. Holy crap, how is this not a mythic, let alone a rare? So you can put loyalty counters repeatedly with a 3-2 creature, which, okay, that gets killed by even shock. So, I mean, they had to do that, basically. If this is a 0-5, I'd be really complaining. But yeah, you just, you, you got Planeswalkers out, you want to over-accelerate them to their alts, and I mean real Planeswalkers that have alts, by the way. Or keep your uncommon negative-only ones going, like keep artificially giving them loyalty. You just drop in lands. Well, guess what you do in a Super Friends deck? Play like 27 lands and keep dropping them in. So yeah, this is probably the craziest proliferate card I've seen so far. I think this thing's going to be pretty damn popular. I think they might have gone a little far with this one, actually. The thing is, though, the the defense against this card, like how to deal with it, what somebody would do about it, is already what you're trying to do to beat Super Friends, which is get the guards out of the way, get the blockers out of the way, and start hitting the Planeswalkers. Or drop a giant five-cost white nuke that gets rid of everything. There's actually two of them now, Urza's and that new one. Oh, wait, Urza's one get rid of the enemy Planeswalkers. Whoops. So this is pretty messed up. I mean, every time you drop in a land, you can over-accelerate your sagas. You can drop a loyalty on every Planeswalker. I mean, a Johnny is probably the most dangerous one, the four-cost a Johnny. Because you drop him in, and if you plus one him, and then the next turn use uh, uh, Settle the Score, you can instantly ult him. So one turn after he comes out, his ultimate is out, his emblem is out, and the opponent loses. I have an entire deck built around just that. It's called All or Nothing. It requires cards from the next set coming up, but I've been playing it now and doing really well with it. So what does that tell you? So you throw this in some kind of Simic Teferi garbage, he's going to be at his emblem twice before you can even blink. I mean, this is just... To add Proliferate is so ridiculous. At this point, and I know I've said this before, and it's always been true, they need to ban Teferi. They have to. It's not an option. That game-ruining, cheating asshole has to go, period. There is no defense against it, no excuse. He is too powerful. He's too good. He's worse than Jace the Mind Sculptor by a long shot. I don't care what anybody says. In the deck he's in, the way he shuts down the game with the card advantage and untapping, it is utterly ridiculous. You mix him with Wilderness, Reclamation, the game's over. And this is on color with it. So something in that combination has to go, and I'm going to say it's Teferi. Other than that, sure, try to, you know, burn three mana and then maybe drop in a land to accelerate your Planeswalkers a couple time, uh, times. If you have enough of them out, you're probably going to win anyway. So this isn't, like, completely bonkers. It just feels like it, like an actual practical use. But um, I don't like it. So that's it for mostly yesterday's spoilers. I'll see you guys next video.